Thank you, everyone. Okay, so um, I think it's a good time to start. Um, first of all, yeah, I would love to introduce you to my first talk here at Android Talk at Bootpad. So what I'm talking about today is um, about the language called Kotlin and um, how that can help you win by using Kotlin to get everything Android development. So um, my name is Kitinanda Kazin. Yeah, uh, this is my um, name in the internet, she's speaking on that. You can um, search that online and then you're gonna find me there. Yeah, probably if you're not sure whether that is me or not, you can speak Japanese to, to him. If he doesn't respond, sounds a lot like him because I cannot speak Japanese yet. Um, this is my Twitter account as well. I sometimes tweet, but sometimes like follow other people in the Android community. Um, this is my um, GitHub. I have a lot of open source projects. I'm a big fan of open source projects. I have some of them in the project as well, so feel free to check it out. All right. So first of all, maybe you, you might have like a question in your mind, like why we need Kotlin? What is Kotlin, by the way? And then why do we need one? Because we can use Java for that. So one may have an answer, like thinking about uh, Kotlin, well, because we need to stick with Java as kind of safe itch on um, Android development. So um, you can think about like, oh yeah, maybe we don't have a Java X time, which we all know that Java time is so bad to use. So we want to use that, so there's no Java X time for that. And another thing is no stream API. You, you all know about that already, that stream API is a wonderful thing to add in Java like later on. And we want to use that, but unfortunately, we cannot because um, Android cannot support Java 8 no more. And we have no lambdas, we have no method reference in Android. But actually, if you think about this hard enough, this is not true at all. Yeah, like for uh, Java time, for example, you can use the portable version um, called 310 Android um, BP, which is Android backport. And so this is no longer true, this argument. And another thing is about the stream API. If you like um, been doing Android long enough, you're gonna know that we have RxJava to support that, and you can use that in Android development. And then we can also like you know use um, Redtone Lambda as well um, to support um, Android development. So these arguments actually are not that true. But if you think about that, like so. You may have a question again, why? Why do we need Kotlin again? So, let me tell you why. If you think about Java as a language, there are some couple inherent like, restrictions. For example, we cannot add method into your platform type. For example, you might want to add a method named post in your activity. You cannot do that because Java doesn't allow you to do that. And you're gonna have problems with now in Java I have tons of problems with now when I use Java. I have a lot of code say that if now and then do something, if not now, do another thing. Tons of code like that. And mutability is everywhere. Thinking about Android as a, as a framework, a lot of things can mutate behind your back. There are tons of stuff that you cannot do and then mutate in a way that you are not expected. And the last thing is one of my things that I really don't like about Java at all, it forces you to think about the object. You have to model everything in your language, in your um, implementation around the object itself. Sometimes you just need only one function, but Java doesn't allow you to do that. So you have to create a class, you have to have a utils class like that. So those are the real reason why you're probably thinking about new languages. And more than that, we also have some Android problem. As you may all know, like Android framework is a inheritance body. They use inheritance everywhere. Starting from one, you need to extend to um, app compat activity. You need to do a lot of inheritance to do that. Tons of stuff in Android framework are all inheritance. Another thing is novel ability usage. Things in Android, sometimes they annotate with normal, sometimes they annotate with, with nullable, but sometimes they don't, just don't not annotate at all. So those are the problems that you can face because you don't know whether you expect this thing to be now or not. So now it's a real problem in Android development. The other one that I kind of feel that Java is pretty clunky to use is API ceremony. Like if you think about your favorite um, API, for example, like reading text from the file, 
you would find like, oh, you have to create a byte stream, you have to create I.O. stream, passing around those stuff. Those kind of ceremonies is like, it's too hard. It's, it's not related to your problem at all, but you have to do it. So how about like you're thinking a little bit more, take a step back and um, think about like other alternatives out there. So in here, I want to introduce you with the language main coupling. So this language says like, oh, we are static type programming language on JVM, support Android, and 100% interoperable with Java. So I think one of the key things I really like about uh, Kotlin as a language is the fact that they want to maintain interoperable in, uh, interoperability with the Java itself. So they feel that, okay, yeah, we don't want to fight the tie by creating a new language after all. We want to create something that on top of the good thing that we already have. So this means that all of the Java libraries that you have used before is still working by using Kotlin. So today I feel uh, I would take this opportunity to introduce you a little bit about Kotlin feature. Um, those are the things that I really like about Kotlin. For example, like now safety, like property and reuse, extension methods, those are the really good thing about Kotlin as a language. But today I'm not gonna go all over on these, but just only to pick the one that I feel that they are most important ones. The first one is now safety. I mean, I've been using Java a lot, actually. I find like Java is so robust in handling now, and actually most of the time, I feel like all of my crash uh, lightning reports has been you know, filled up with now party exception. So Java is like, it's king in here. It's so hard to get away from now party exception when using Java. So you might ask why Kotlin um, helps you in here. So for example, I will introduce you with a little um, function on line of codes here. So in here you can create a string and then you annotate it with a question mark at the end just to make sure that this type is can be potentially now. So in here, now the whole thing is able to be now. So you can do, the next one is you can call length on it. So in here it's called save call, which is question mark dot. And what happens in here is that Kotlin would check if now check in here. If the string is now, it's gonna skip this operation. If the string is not now, they're going to return it to you. So this kind of thing is kind of makes you feel that you're in the safe hand. There's something that compiler helps you, and then comes something the compiler wants you to deal with now specifically. Another thing is you can do is the function itself. In here, do something um, except string, right? And string here uh, doesn't have question mark at the end. So it means that the string that passes into here must not be now. So in here, if you're passing a nullable string into the function, the compiler is gonna scold at you and then say, like, oh, you cannot get past this because this is not a valid code because you're potentially passing now into the function that doesn't accept now. So this kind of thing is like a first class feature that bundle into a Kotlin language that makes you feel that you have compiler at your back. It's much more safer to model your, your implementation that way. Another thing that I really like about Kotlin is the type inference. For example, you can say um, while I int equal to 10 here on the first line, but actually since you already assigned a value to it, you can just omit the uh, explicit type here. So you can just say while j, for example, equal to 10. So compiler knows right away that j is in, so you don't have to type it out. And then also that applies to the function as well. For example, here add is accepting two integers, x and y, and then returning int out, and then plus them together, which is kind of makes sense. But in here, you can also um, use the, um, the equal sign to let the compiler know that this function would return x plus y right away. You don't have to say, oh, it's returning int or something like that. You don't have to do that. And, the, and then also like in here, Kotlin also smart enough when you when you working with nullable object here. For example, in here, string is a nullable string, right? But when you call it with left inside the function, because if you see there's a question mark dot at the at front of the left, 
So this means if uh, the string is now, so it's going to skip the whole let right away. But once it gets passed into the let, so compiler knows right away that this is non-nullable string. So you can just call len without using say call or anything like that. It's just using as if it were uh, you know, declared as a non-nullable string. So those are the things that call smart cast. So Kotlin is, you know, helps you to identify the point where you need to actually use the state call and some place that you don't actually need to use the state call. So you don't have to do that all the time. Another big one is extension function. Yeah, you might think about like what kind of useful thing about this. I come up with one example. Let's say you want to calculate for a Fibonacci sequence and then you can annotate on the int type itself. We don't own int class, right? But we can tell compiler that we want to have one more function here called fib. So it works operate on the int itself. So you can just later on call 31 here dot fib and then calculate the Fibonacci at 30, 31st place for you. So this kind of thing is really handy because sometimes you just want to open the class as functionality and then done with it. You don't have to create a whole class or YouTube class for that. So in here it's pretty useful. Another one is Lambda. Lambda here in Kotlin is a first class system. This means you can create a, val a, a variable on it and assign to it. For example, the power of two is the function or a lambda that is accepting int and returning int as a power of that int. So in here, you can see, you can see right away that they um, infer the type for you that is the function that accept int and return int as well. And um, you can print it out in um, as print, print here and then power of two and then you're gonna get 25 as expected. And then also there's a, um, language feature called observable here. So every time that you set the value into the full class here, so the block inside that is meta O value and new value gonna get calls all the time. So you can get like some sort of notification for free when you want to update on the variable in the class. So down there you're gonna see I created a full object named F and then I, I'm gonna assign the value V1 and then I assign the update listener there. So every time that value gets updated, update listener is gonna be called. And in here it's gonna bring out, so every time that I set to v2, v3, it's gonna bring out right away because the block inside is called. So this is wonderful feature for coupling that helps us a big way in terms of like notification or maybe like a, um, a pattern where you want to observe some change into a variable in the class. So you might ask again, so what does it mean to Android developer here? So I want to tell you that Kotlin loves Android. Loves so much at the point where, you know, you just install the plugin on Android Studio and it's all done. That is what you, what's preventing you from not using Kotlin. You just go into your Android Studio, open up the plugin, search for Kotlin, and then install it. And then that's pretty much all, all done. After that, JetBrain also like kind enough to have a function called convert Java code to Kotlin. So what you do is you come, you type um, in the action here, say convert Java code to Kotlin, and then boom, you got Kotlin code from your Java code pretty much right away. Obviously, the code that is being generated is not 100% idiomatic. What I mean by idiomatic is there must be a good way in Kotlin that makes the code look much nicer and more terse and looks good, but that is a good start already. And once you've done that, it's gonna create a, a line in your view Gradle file, and then you, since Gradle is gonna download dependency for you right away. So this kind of thing is possible because um, JetBank as a company, they, they, are, they are a company that behind the, the Kotlin language itself, so they know how to you know, work around with Java, make a language that is good for Java, for, for Java programmer, and then also like they are on the tool itself, so they know how to make it so beautifully integrated with um, IntelliJ platform. So in a nutshell, you can, you can see here that you have basically a Java code, and then you have a Java compiler named Java C, 
and then you convert it to a bytecode and then pass it on to Android, right? So in here, Kotlin is doing pretty much the same thing. There is no log rocket science here. They're just using Kotlin C as a compiler. Compile your Kotlin code into a bytecode again and pass it on to Android. So that's why you can use it on Android like pretty much seamless as Java code. So also, like different teams like, like Android development, they supply us with uh, Kotlin Android extension. So in regular um, Java, um, Android development, you're probably going to have XML that describes your UI look like. You can just, you know, using the name here, which is text view, right? And then you can just use it right away without using file view by ID or anything like that in your activity code. Down there, if you're looking at my awesome activity, you can see right away that I access text view by, by using text view dot text right away. This is all possible by using the plugin or for the Kotlin. And what they do behind the scenes is that they call the find you by ID for you and use it as an extension over your class. So you can use that without calling by ID yourself. What you have to do is import one line here. So basically it's import the code for you. And another good thing is SAM conversion. If you remember that you have like a button that's set on click listener, right? And then um, listener gonna perform a click inside the code inside, and then you can assign to do something when the button is clicked. In here, there is no code at all that you have to write. It's change all of your single abstract method, which is SAM here, and then convert it to um, Colin Lambda right away. So down there, Compiler is going to show you this thing, but you don't have to write that yourself. But compiler is going to know right away that it converts your SAM interface into a Lambda, so you can use it Kotlin with ease. Another thing is extension. Moreover than that, like there are many multiple times that I feel that I want to get a list of the children of a group group here. So what you can do here is you can annotate over the view group class and you add one function called children, right? And inside there, you can just implement it on your own just to say like, okay, from zero to shy call plus a minus one, you're gonna map that to and then supply the get child add function. And what you get here is the list of the view that is under your hierarchy in your view group. So you anywhere else you can just say, linear layout dot children and then you're gonna get list of view that is under your linear layout. This is pretty handy most of the time. I run into a situation where I want to, you know, see all the children inside my view group over runtime. And if you have to call like okay uh get chai at index something yourself, it's gonna be a little painful. So in here another good thing is is visible here. So you can implement it as Visibility equal equal with uh, view dot visible, and then this um, this uh, this property is gonna be like telling you whether this view is visible or not. Because in Android you have three visible state, right? View, invisible, and uh, visible, invisible, and gone. So this is another handy method that you can use. The other one that uh, you've been using a lot is the location manager here. So in your Android experience, you probably have to write it down like guest system service and then context of something. But in Kotlin, you can just annotate your content class by saying that your content class from now, that's going to be one more property for you, which is location manager. And then you can use location manager right away in your code without using cast all the time. Another good ex extension that I really use in my um, Android app is Sometimes, I, most of the time, I feel like text watcher is so verbose. If you want to observe some change in your in the text, for example, it's so verbose that you have to like, implement T three methods. You have to say like, okay, before text change, I need to ignore it. After text change, I need to ignore it. Because what I actually want is the on text change listener, right? Because you want to observe all the change from the in text. In here, you can just, implement this this way, you create a proxy class here, which is I'm started with underscore here as a text watcher, and then you implement all the bottle of code 
for you. And after that, in the activity class, what you can do is to access your text field here, and you can just write down on text change, and then all the text change is going to be run into this code right away without having actually implement you know like all the text watcher yourself. So this has become really really handy in Kotlin situation in many many scenario. For example, like a DSL language, Kotlin is excel in that area because Kotlin is built for that. So those kind of things kind of makes you feel at home when you use Kotlin in Android development. Another thing that I really hate about Android is the wobbleness of using something. Um, it, like in here, for example, like share preference. If you remember that, you have to say like, oh yeah, I need to create the editor and then apply it, and, and and then after you do something, you need to don't forget to say apply it at the end. This kind of things that I feel this is too verbose. At at one point, as a programmer, we feel lazy to do this all the time. So what in here you can do is you can just write down one inline function here. And the word inline means that it's going to inject the code into your client code right away. And you write down edit here. And this function is, is a ex it's a extension. Okay. Um, yeah, this is the extension over the chapter friends editor class so you can call it right away and what you when when you use it it becomes simple like preference.edit and then you put your username and string that you want and after that once it uh, the blocks get called it's gonna call apply right away on the top so you don't have to you know uh, remember that you have to not forget to call apply again so those kind of thing is really handy so at this point, I hope you guys kind of convinced. Yeah, Kotlin is so beautiful. Uh, this is what I really like about Kotlin that makes you it express so much in a short line of code. So from the point where I am introduced to Kotlin and get hooked to it, I feel like I'm on a flip table every time that I need to write Java code in Android development. It's no longer the point where I feel that Java should be used as an automatic response when you have to write Android development anymore. So I wanted to be able to come and see that. So um, in, in Coopat team, how do we introduce Kotlin to the team? Actually, Coopat, we have tons of Java code inside our project. So this is undeniable. And the project has been here for quite some time. So you're going to see that we have tons of Java codes under the scene. So the way that we use it here is that we start off by introducing Kotlin code into our test code first. So that is kind of like a thing that is kind of makes sense if you want to try something out, but you don't want to affect the production code. So you kind of test it in the test code first. So in here, um, in November 14, I put open the PR that we convert all um, writing one unit test code in Kotlin. So we introduce this to the team. And multiple months later, if you're looking at uh, our global Android app, we have around 20, 23 percentage of Kotlin to our project. So it's pretty well received by the teammates because we all see the power and expressiveness of the language. And good thing here again is because it's 100 percent interoperable with Java, so you can start right now and then just. Uh, migrate the code as much as you like. You can just start on by one file and you can start on by convert everything into Kotlin too. So this is a nice thing about that. There are a long way for Kupad app uh, to go for it um, regarding to Kotlin migration, but we have a you know like high hope into here. We want to introduce more code in Kotlin for Kupad app. So our strategy right now is every time that we need to write a new file, we create the file in Kotlin, Kotlin, in Kotlin language. If you have to refactor and then the refactor is over 50% of the file, we convert that into Kotlin. But if you, we need to do like one or two line bug fixing, we can continue that in Java. So this way we kind of encourage people to learn about Kotlin, but we don't have to hurt our performance or hurt our you know, productivity of the team so much. 
Okay, all right. So this is all the resources that I gathered for you so far. Actually, they are consulting right now because Kotlin is kind of like a hot topic in Android development these days. So um, you can look at wonderful Kotlin Lang. So you can look upon that as a documentation and website. You can try it on, on the Kotlin compiler. Um, on Kotlin Lang again, you can just go in there and then click on the try from Kotlin. So there is a browser version of it. So you can write code into the browser itself and then get the hang of it. And uh, the last thing you, you need to try it on, on the Kotlin Lang again, I, this is the wonderful Lang, uh, the website. They have everything. So um, I think this is a good time for me to ask for if you have any question or anything. So I'm going to entertain you with this little clip. OK, all right. OK, all right. So um, any one of you have a question or anything about covering anything? Everyone seems to be excited with the video. <laughs> uh, over here? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, sorry, um, uh, yeah. So, uh, how widely used is Kotlin in general? I mean, like, uh, I'm, I'm sure, the, uh, I, I guess people that use Android, as far as I know, are more, uh, they come from a very strong Java background, from well, most developers, I guess. Yeah. So, I, I was wondering, how many people are actually transferring to using Kotlin right now? Um, in the team, you mean Kotlin, or like, you mean a community as a whole? A community as a whole, exactly. Um, that is pretty hard to answer, but I would say this is a hot topic, and then everyone is at least try to look at it and then try to get their hands dirty in Kotlin. But I, I don't know the number, but I would say like at least 50% of them would like at least try Kotlin. But I'm not sure whether they're successful in convert Kotlin to a Kotlin project or not, or actually introducing to a project or not. But I would say at least like a lot of good developers should have ever tried it. I mean, uh, my strategy in here, if you work in a team, for example, I would suggest to start with the test first. That is kind of like a safe bet. And then once you like it, you start introducing it into production code. So that is kind of like a strategy that I've been going for um, since the beginning. And in my previous job, we have 100% code for company. And like in Coopad, we want to have that too. So we move slowly toward that. So there is no right or wrong strategy in here. You can integrate as much as you want or as little as you want. So, um, anyone has a question or anything? Oh. Thank you very much for the talk. So, I'm an iOS developer, and I guess in iOS we've got this similar situation where we move on from like Objective C to Swift. And while I really love Swift, there are like small things that I kind of like miss from Objective C. So, I was wondering if this is the same with like Kotlin and Java? Is there like anything you miss from Java? Yeah, that, that's a good question actually. But um, based on my experience, I don't feel I miss anything at all. But the one, there is one thing that I find Kotlin is not mature yet, is the community itself maybe. That is one of the, the things that I feel that Kotlin should be evolve around the community and then we have a lot more libraries that way. The other thing that I'm thinking of is like the um, annotation processing, that because that is the huge thing in Java. But in Kotlin, we also, in Kotlin, they also uh, supported that as well. But I would say like the tool is not great yet. So the tooling around that is not really great yet. So maybe that is small little things that I kind of miss from Java itself. But since it's kind of interoperable, so you can, anytime that you feel Kotlin doesn't answer you, you can fire up the editor and then create a Java file right away. So I would say it's kind of a little small bumps down the road. I think it should be get fixed later on. But yeah, well, I, I would say it's just a little thing like annotation processing and everything like that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'd like to know if Kotlin is also considered as a native uh, 
application part or is it like a hybrid solution? Oh, yeah, this is a great question. Actually, if you coming back to the uh, slide that I have, I would say it's called call a native one because at the end, you're looking at the, um, in a nutshell here. So at the end, it's compiled down to the Java bytecode. So again, here, you basically just have another way to you know, interpret your code into a Java bytecode file and then send it to the Android to run it. So I would say it's considered as an ATF. I don't, I don't find it as a hybrid at all. But um, this is another thing that I've been uh, talking with the JetBrain teams. They said like they want to support Kotlin as a native means that it's not going to run on JVM anymore. So it can run on a machine. So if you call in a sense where native is run on JVM, I would say it's, it's still, still native. Okay, alright then. Um, and if you have any question or you can think about that later, you can talk to me, fetch me later on. So I'm going to be around. So that is good. Alright, so um, thank you so much. And we also have a little survey for you if you want to, you know, write down maybe here now or later. You can do that later too. So um, we probably gonna have like around five to ten minutes each break before we have another talk my by my wonderful colleague. Okay. Thank you.